Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this cute little paper clay dragon project. I actually started this in two different live streams, which is why I chose this project to finish this week. I really wanted to show you guys the finished dragon, how it ended up. If you were in the original live stream, thanks for joining in. If you haven't seen it and would like to, I will put both links in the description below. Just so you know, the very first one has horrible audio. If you want to survive through listening to that, you're more than welcome to, but I will kind of summarize what I did in this video. So what you're seeing, and I'm looking at the video over there in case you're wondering what I'm looking at. What you're seeing now is my uh, the project name is the Sleeping Dragon Inn, and I want to make a dragon that's draped across the top of the roof. I made this kind of a thatch roof. I also have that video. I will link it in the iCard above if you want to see how I made that. But I want to make this kind of a really fun fantasy project. So what I did is I started by draping a wire across the top, how I wanted it to kind of drape, and then I added aluminum foil and masking tape, and I just kept going until I got the shape that I wanted. I wanted him to look very sleepy, and I almost wanted him to have a cat-like appearance, kind of like a cat that would be sleeping on the back of a couch. I wanted him to look like he was totally relaxed, totally at home on the roof of this project. Now as you can see in the video I'm adding paper clay. I am using creative paper clay and I will put a picture somewhere so you can see what the package looks like. It's super easy to work with. It is um, thin. It doesn't have like big chunks in it so it lays down flat, especially if you use water. Now um, what the black screen was the start of my second live stream which has better audio if you want to check that out. But in that live stream I am uh, well, I've finished the first layer of paper clay and it has dried and so in this live stream I am doing the fine details like the little toes, the little fingers, I think I add the horns in this and then I also try to do some scales. And these little details are actually really easy to do in paper clay. I really enjoyed working with it. This is the first big project I've done with paper clay. I've done some little things. I did my Iron Maiden with paper clay, but I had a lot left over and I really wanted to use it on something big, something fun. So um, as you see, I'm messing with the toes. There's not like any armature inside of them, so I have to be really careful. Armature is like the wire or the basically the skeleton of a sculpture, and these are just paper clay, so those are really delicate, but later on you'll see what I kind of coat it with to make the paper clay stronger. So in um, this live stream is where I try and do the scales, and for the scales I decided to keep it super simple. I tried several different things, but what I ended up doing, oh, I need to talk about the wings first, sorry. <laughs> the wings are actually wire with masking tape over them, and I did that so that they would be super easy to um, shape once I have them in the project. And uh, because the paper clay is dry, I need to take a drill, I just used a Dremel, and put two holes where I wanted the wings to go, kind of behind where I thought his like shoulder blades might be. And because they have wire inside the masking tape, I could kind of shape them to go along with the roof shape. And it actually held its shape pretty well once I had it in place. Then I kind of worked on his face a little bit, and now I'm starting on the scales, which all I did was roll a ball of clay and then flatten it, and then I made sure I had a little bit of water on my fingers, and then I just kind of laid it down onto the already dried paper clay, and it bonded really, really well. So as you can see, this project, I kind of worked on it as much as I could in a live stream, but making all those scales was really, really time consuming and would be really boring <laughs> to do just for hours, I think. I think it'd be boring. Um, so I actually did those off camera and I will show you the finished project in a second with the scales. And I did both sides. One side of the dragon doesn't have a complete foot so that he fits onto the roof. It kind of just looks like it's tucked up underneath him, but um, he only really has one completely sculpted foot. 
Now to make this project extra strong, it, I took um, wood glue, which if you've been watching a lot of my videos, you will probably have noticed I use wood glue for everything. That stuff is amazing. If you've never used wood glue, go get some. It is so versatile. I love it. It's amazing. It's the most amazing substance of the month, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> But I used the wood glue and I put it all over the dragon's body. I made sure and get up, got it up underneath the scales. And this is going to help give it some strength. That doesn't mean that it's not breakable, that it couldn't possibly be broken, but it's definitely a lot stronger than just leaving it plain paper clay. Now after that was finished, I decided to put a layer of black. Now this, I actually did two different layers of black, and the reason for this is because of the scales. There are lots of places where if I just painted it um, with one coat, I guess is what I'm trying to say, you would be able to see the paper clay. But what I wanted to do is make a very thorough layer of black. So in the future, if I'm painting and I really like the paint job, I don't feel like there's paper clay showing through. Now to cover the wings, I didn't want to put paper clay on the wings because I wanted them to stay very thin, but I didn't want the masking tape texture on there. And so I decided, actually this was a um, suggestion by a miniaturist friend, so thanks Julia. Um, I decided to take some uh, tissue paper that you use in gifts and I cut out little leaf shapes or feather shapes and I just did this by folding the tissue paper and then I glued it on just one on top of each other and I didn't put glue on top of it because I knew I would be painting over it and I knew the paint would kind of glue those together. So also on those I decided to do a layer of black paint. I really didn't have a paint theme in mind. I just wanted to kind of play around with it, be free with it, and uh, kind of just see what happened. Now this dollhouse is actually my daughter's dollhouse. She, it's, well, anyway, <laughs> it's kind of her dollhouse, but I'm kind of deciding what's going on in it. So I wanted to make the dragon purple, which is her favorite color. So I decided to start with a dark purple, and this is kind of a base coat. You won't really see a ton of dark purple in the final piece, but some of it shows through every now and then. I think it has a nice touch. So I went ahead and just gently brushed a dark purple over the entire dragon. Now I'm adding a bit of a light purple, like kind of a, a lavender, and um, I'm not being as thorough with this. I want some of the black to show through. I want some of the dark purple to show through. And it's going to give uh, the dragon a little bit more visual interest. And then I decided I didn't really want his face to be so dark purple. And so I decided to add a bit of like a cream color. And the reason I didn't show you the label on this paint is because this is the paint that I specifically mixed up for the house roof for the thatch roof and I wanted to use this color so it felt like he belonged in the project. I've said this before that if you are doing a project with many different elements a lot of times you can use similar paint colors on several different pieces and it will make your project look like it all goes together. So what I ended up doing was painting the hands, face, the end of the tail, the tips of the wings, and the spikes that go down the dragon's back. I painted those the cream color and then like lightly brushed it here and there um, to make it look like it's fading into the color. Sorry, I thought my kid was coming in. The next step was I took some silver and I went all over the dragon. And because the silver is doesn't cover very well, it really didn't change the color, it just gave it a metallic shine. And it, I think it really made it look like all the colors were meant to be together and that dragon was a metallic, magical dragon that was meant to be purple and cream. So here you can see him resting on his roof. He is so at home. I really like him. My daughter liked the darker purple before I did the rest of it on there, but she did decide to name him Lavender. I think she's accepted him for the colors that he is. And anyway, I like how he turned out. 
If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, I would love for you to subscribe. You will get notifications if you hit the notification bell, and that lets you know when I've uploaded a new video. I should be back to working on my normal, normally scheduled projects soon. I hope you guys have an amazing week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!